Hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about a topic that is recurring in not only with my patients, but here on social media. And many times people will like say, a recent comment was, appreciate all your information and everything, but Dr. So-and-so said no soy, so I'm doing that. I'm like, well, that's great. You can do what you choose, but what does the actual science say? That would be a better way, in my opinion, of navigating your health. Um, gurus, in, you know, many times they are limited by the science that was available at the time that they maybe supported their opinion. But as science grows, for example, HRT and understanding that hormone replacement therapy or menopausal hormone therapy can be very beneficial for many women. You know, if we stuck to the same dogma of 20 years ago, many women will be suffering and not being able to actually see the benefits of actually utilizing hormone replacement therapy. For example, like myself, having gone through a very interesting perimenopause, menopause phase. Um, that's for another story, but I feel like soy is one of those controversial things because someone said an opinion or read a blog, but nobody's actually taken the time to wrap up the science. Like what does the current research say? And that's what we're gonna talk about today. As many of you know, I'm a huge proponent for soy. Soy has been shown over and over again to be very beneficial. So we're gonna break this down a little bit. For first, we're gonna, well, before I even go, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Um, my name is Dr. Lori Marvis. I'm a family, uh, board certified family and lifestyle medicine physician. Been taking care of patients for a couple of decades now. And I've been plant-based for going on 13 years. So um, I hope you enjoy the information you're gathering here, but please subscribe, share this with anyone you think might be uh, find some benefit. So let me jump right into the science. Okay. So first of all, I'm just going to talk about maybe the top three isoflavones, the, the main ones found. First of all, there's genistein. So that's the most studied isoflavone, right? It has the highest what we call biological activity. Um, it's known for its ability to bind to estrogen receptors, particularly estrogen receptor beta. Now there's two different types of estrogen receptors we'll get to in a minute. Um, but that can act as both an estrogen agonist, meaning that it promotes similar types of things that estrogen would in your body, but also antagonist, meaning that it will actually be anti-estrogenic. And that really depends on the tissue in which it binds, okay? So keep that in mind as we go along. Next is the um, diazine. So this is another major isoflavone. It can be converted into what we call equal, right, in the intestinal bacteria. Now this has a stronger estrogenic effect, but the ability of it to be converted really depends um, individuals. So it's very varying throughout, you know, de again, depending on the individual, how much was actually converted. So that can have the, it can limit the overall impact on your health. <clears throat> Next is the glycetine. That's a much smaller amount and it binds to estrogen receptors with less potency. Um, but again, even despite its lower activity, it can still have an effect on your overall effect of the um, soy isoflavones. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about the benefits of soy isoflavones, okay? So these typically come from soy products, um, although phytoestrogens can be found in other plant um, plants uh, or foods. The soy is the one that we talk about the most because it has the most. Um, so let's talk about the soy in particular. One is breast cancer prevention. So soy isoflavones may help prevent breast cancer by acting on the estrogen receptors. In postmenopausal women, high doses of soy isoflavones can lower breast cell proliferation, right, and alter estrogen receptor signaling, which really will reduce your cancer risk overall. And next, let's talk about bone health. So isoflavones have also been shown to prevent bone loss in postmenopausal women. And then there was a study with Chinese women, soy isoflavones helped maintain bone mineral content, particularly those with lower initial bone mass, okay? Next is cardiovascular health, your heart health, your uh, vasculature. Uh, soy isoflavones can absolutely improve your lipid profile. They can lower your LDL and triglycerides. And they also have this amazing anti-inflammatory effect, which can really reduce markers of cardiovascular disease risk. So such as your HSCRP. And many times we have to remember cardiovascular disease is multifactorial. 
LDL absolutely uh, is a big piece of that, but so is inflammation. And so many factors can influence your inflammation. And by, by far, the most uh, things you can do, the simplest thing you can do is switching more to an anti-inflammatory diet like a whole food plant-based diet. Of course, exercise, all those other things are very helpful. But as far as like something you do three times a day, every single day, well, on average, two to three times a day, every single day of the rest of your life, is eating. So start working on that. Uh, next is menopausal symptom relief, right? So for menopausalism, uh, soy isoflavones can absolutely alleviate some symptoms like hot flashes, especially if you do about a cup of the whole soybean daily, or half a cup. <clears throat> and that just kind of could either supplement or in some women, if they prefer, replace any potential HRT. Um, for myself, it wasn't enough. So I decided to embrace HRT and I have felt like a new human ever since. Um, next is cancer prevention. So when you look at soy isoflavones, they can modulate estrogen metabolism, okay? Reducing the production of potentially really carcinogenic metabolites. And so the effect is particularly beneficial um, in the risk of hormone related cancers. So how does this work exactly? Well, let's talk about it. So there's five different things we're gonna speak about when we think about the estrogenic and the anti-estrogenic effects. So first of all, you have the estrogen receptor binding, right? So soy isoflavones, in particular, that first one that I mentioned, the genistein, it can bind to estrogen receptors throughout the body, okay? They have a higher affinity for that estrogen receptor beta, which we spoke about, than for the estrogen receptor alpha, and which explains their, their very tissue-specific effects, okay? by um, this binding can mimic or block the actions of estrogen. And it really just depends on the context, where, where the tissue is and which receptor they're actually binding to will determine the effect on the tissue, okay? Next is selective estrogen receptor modulation. Okay, let's get back to, let's look at this, break it down. Isoflavones can act like what we call SERMs, right? That selective estrogen receptor modulators. And in tissues where estrogen receptor beta is prominent um, or the predominant ones, such as your cardiovascular system and your bone, the isoflavones exhibit what we call estrogenic effects, meaning um, they will promote you know, heart health or bone health. Conversely, um, where there's estrogen receptor alpha predominates like the breast and uterus, they act like anti-estrogens or they decrease the estrogenic effect, which can be beneficial when we're looking at decreasing risk for breast cancer and such. Next is antioxidant properties, right? So the soy isoflavones produce or possess, excuse me, antioxidant properties that can really help with your oxidative stress, which is really a factor in developing a lot of uh, chronic diseases that we deal with. And then that effect contributes to your overall, you know, health benefits, of course. Um, so we have anti-inflammatory and anti-cancer effects so far. Next, we have the modulation of estrogen metabolism, right? So what does that mean? So soy isoflavones really influence the metabolism of the endogenous estrogens or the estrogens that your body makes naturally, promoting the conversion of estrogens to less potent and less what we call genotoxic metabolites. So that kind of shifts the metabolism and reduces the risk of estrogen-related cancers. Um, next, you have an impact on gene expression, right? So isoflavones can alter gene expression related to estrogenic activity. Um, for example, they can modify the uh, methylation status of genes involved in cancer progression um, and therefore exerting protective effects. So let's talk a little bit, let's run this over. You have it binding to different receptors, acting differently on different tissues. You have it being um, again, either anti-estrogenic or pro-estrogen uh, promoting, that's what they call agonist effect or anti-agonist. So you can see, um, like I said, it will either promote the estrogen effect in tissue or actually decrease the estrogenic effect in the tissue based on the receptor in the tissue that, that it is. Antioxidants, you also have the metabolism of estrogen uh, being modified, and then it actually can impact gene expression. So it's acting on a lot of different factors in, a, um, in the body, and so many things other come with the food that the isoflavones come with. You know, soy also is a great source of protein. It's also fantastic, full of fiber, 
right? So, so many things can come from a soy food. And so many people are so afraid when it's a little bit higher fat content, that's actually okay. It's the good fat that's healthy for you. We cannot be fat phobic. Yes, we need to modulate our calories if we're looking to lose some weight, but if you want to do a slow, progressive weight loss, not just, you know, crash dieting because then you don't feel well, you lose muscle mass. There's just so many unhealthy ways to lose weight. And crash dieting is absolutely not a way to do this in a healthy, sustainable manner for the long term. But when you look at soy foods, they absolutely can be beneficial in so many ways. I eat two to three servings of soy daily, including soy milk, tofu, um, soy curls, tempeh. Um, yeah, you name it. I, I love, or edamame is another one. I love soy products because they offer so many benefits. Now, those of you obviously who are... Um, struggling with soy allergies. Unfortunately, you are unable to utilize soy as a food product, but there's so many other benefits to other plant foods um, that you definitely want to eat a variety of other things. Again, I go deeper into that, but right now this is about the soy, but it's really easy for me to get off track and start talking about other stuff. But I really wanted to highlight the benefits of soy. Again, just going to run over what were the benefits you are seeing. Whoops. I just had my list here. Breast cancer prevention, improved bone health, cardiovascular health, decreasing your LDL cholesterol, menopausal symptom relief in some women, and cancer prevention in general. Um, okay, guys, I hope that is helpful. Again, I appreciate the gurus that were before us, but just because someone said something 20, 30 years ago based on research doesn't mean that that shouldn't change. And your HRT for menopausal women who are suffering is an absolute example of this. And just this week alone, I've seen at least four or five women who've been plant-based longer than I have and were suffering in silence because of this shame or judgment because they felt like they shouldn't be asking for medication because of this. Again, we're stuck in this silo thinking that just because we eat a plant-based diet that it's going to cure all things. It's a fantastic tool, but it is not the only tool in the toolbox. So we limit ourselves when we live like this. It's it's just another way of someone saying, well, I'm going to do the carnivore diet. I'm going to do some other type of diet or whatever. You have to keep an open mind. You have to look at the evidence and be understanding that sometimes one time your perspective needs to change because this, the evidence is changing. If you keep a closed mind, you're going to limit yourself and potentially harm, again, as a physician, be harming patients. Um, I think back to 20 years ago when I was finishing up my training and this research was coming out, how many conversations I had with women going through menopause, but I did not provide it because of the, the, the current evidence was showing that HRT was not necessarily a good thing. But now we look at it, the different type of estrogens that are available, the different type of progesterone, this is a big, big deal. So I hope that was helpful. Again, I got it off a little bit target, but soy, you guys, is good for you. The science is proving that. Don't be afraid to eat it. It's fantastic. It's a great way to add variety and protein and so many benefits to your already amazing whole food plant-based diet. So please look at the science. That's all I'm asking. All right, guys, have a good rest of your day. And um, as always, I'm so thankful for you for being here and I'm sending you joy, love, peace, and healing again because we all need more of that in our lives and um, have blessings this evening.